Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice exponential equation. We have 4 times 9 to the power x plus 3 times 16 to the power x equals 7 times 12 to the power x. And we're going to be solving for x values. I'll talk about real solutions as well as complex solutions so that the solutions are complete. Okay, I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, actually I changed my mind, I want to start with the second method. So let's start with the second method because second method is more fun. So I'm going to go ahead and set a equal to 3 to the power x and b equal to 4 to the power x. One of the things I want you to notice when you see a problem like this, and we've recently done a similar problem, 9 is a perfect square, 16 is a perfect square, and their product is 144, of course, which is another perfect square. But if you square root that number, you're going to get 12, which is the other base. So these numbers are related. That's why we're using substitution as the second method. So from here, obviously, when you set this, 12 to the power x is just going to be a times b, right? Because 3 times 4 is equal to 12. So let's go ahead and plug it in. We're 9 to the power x is just going to be a squared. So we're going to get 4a squared plus 3b squared equals 7ab. And this actually is a quadratic equation. Let's go ahead and put everything on the same side and writing the 7ab in the middle. And now this is quadratic, right? Isn't it? And it's actually factorable uh, by grouping, but we kind of need to split it up. It's, it's kind of like the, um, I would say, the x method. But uh, look at the, some of the coefficients. It's zero, so splitting it up is actually easier. So anyways, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to split up the negative 7 into negative 4 and negative 3 so that I can make this equation factorable by grouping. Okay? Now we're going to make two groups. Uh, first group, these two, and then those two. Second group, take out 4a. You get a minus b, and then minus 3b we get a minus b again. That's how factoring by grouping works. And we can basically take out a minus b as a common factor now, so that this can be written as a minus b times 4a minus 3b equals 0. Awesome. As you know, this is um, this gives us two solutions. So you can basically write this as a minus b equals 0, which means a is equal to b, or 4a minus 3b equals 0, or 4a equals 3b. Okay, now where do we go from here? Now let's go ahead and back substitute. So a is 3 to the power x, and b is 4 to the power x. So if you go ahead and back substitute, this tells us 3 to the power x equals 4 to the power x, and of course you can just think about it. I mean, x equals 0 is obviously a solution, but are there any other solutions? We'll talk about it after the second method. But let's go ahead and divide both sides by 4 to the power x. That gives us a nicer equation, which you know has a solution at x equals 0. So that's going to be the real solution to this equation. And from 4a equals 3b, we basically get something like this. 4 times 3 to the power x equals 3 times 4 to the power x. Notice that the 4 and the 3 are switched around, but if you divide, again, you're going to get 3 over 4 to the power x equals 3 over 4, which is solvable at x equals 1. Great. So we got two solutions. They're both real solutions. And there are no other real solutions, of course, right? So x equals 0 or x equals 1. And if you go ahead and actually check the original problem, you're going to notice that those are solutions because if you think about it, uh, x equals 0 is probably obvious because 4 plus 3 is equal to 7. But if you think about x equals 1, that should give you 36 plus 48 equals 84, which is of course true. Make sense? Okay, great. So those are the two real solutions. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first method and then we'll also mention after the second method, I mean the first method, because second method was first, we'll talk about complex solutions. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first method. So for our first method, let me rewrite the original problem. 4 times 9 to the power x plus 3 times 
16 to the power x equals 7 times 12 to the power x. And then we're going to go ahead and do the following. And we used this strategy just recently, if you remember, there was a problem that I was going to, I said that I was going to talk about that had 4 to the x, 6 to the x, and 9 to the x, I believe. It had the same type of property because 9 times 4 is equal to 36, which is 6 squared. But I forgot to talk about generality, so we could probably generalize it here. But anyways, we're going to divide. Again, the same thing applies. 9 times 6 is 12 squared. So we're going to go ahead and divide everything by the highest base, which is 16 to the power x. So let's go ahead and do it. Divide by 16 to the x. Divide by 16 to the x. And divide by 16 to the power x. All right? And 16 to the power x is going to cancel out, leaving us with a number. And then we can write this as 4 times 9 over 16 to the power x because we have a common exponent. Plus 3 equals 7 times 12 over 16 to the power x. But 12 over 16 can actually be simplified and written as 3 over 4. So let's go ahead and write it as 3 over 4 to the power x. Now this expression is significant because 3 fourths squared is 9 sixteenths. By the way, it's the same thing as saying 9 times 16 is 12 squared because if you think about it, hopefully you're going to realize uh, what that looks like. Okay? Great. So now, what do, where do we get from here? Uh, we're going to go ahead and use substitution. Let's go ahead and replace this with something. How about t? And then we get 4t squared plus 3 equals 7t. You probably noticed right away that t equals 1 works, but there's another solution since this is quadratic and it has real solutions. So we're going to go ahead and make it a full quadratic and just use Vieta's formulas. What does Vieta's formulas tell us? The product of two roots is c over a, which is 3 over 4. Since one of the roots is 1, the other one has to be 3 over 4, which is fairly easy, right? By using Vieta's formulas, you don't have to use the quadratic formula. Now, those are the t values, but what is t? t is 3 over 4 to the power x. Of course, as before, we get 3 to the power, 3 over 4 to the power x is equal to 1, which implies x equals 0, or 3 over 4 to the power x, because these are the t values, t sub 1 and t sub 2, let's call them. And the second one gives you x equals 1, as before, those are going to be the real solutions. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the complex solutions, which we can take it from here. For example, if you think about the first value, 3 over 4 to the power x equals 1, let's just go ahead and complexify 1 and write it as e to the power 2n pi i. And then the next thing we need to do is just uh, natural log both sides. Of course, on the right-hand side, it's going to be a complex log. On the left-hand side, it's just going to be a real log. So it's going to look like this, ln 3 over 4 to the power x equals ln e to the power 2n pi i. And then from here, bring the x to the front and divide by ln 3 fourths, because this is going to be 2n pi i divided by ln 3 fourths. And now, this is a solution, and n is an integer, of course, so if you replace n with different integer values, you're going to get different solutions, which means there are infinitely many solutions in the complex world. It's a multi-valued result. But what happens if n is equal to 0? Of course, if n is equal to 0, then you're going to get x equals 0, as before, right? Of course, that's a complex solution as well. And if you do this exact same thing with the second one, you're going to get the pretty much the same thing, but think about it. This is equal to 3 fourths. Obviously, x equals 1 is the obvious solution, but in order to complexify this, we're going to multiply this by e to the power 2k pi i, and then do the natural logs again. x ln 3 fourths is going to be ln 3 fourths plus 2k pi i. After taking care of all the logarithmic rules and stuff, this is what we're going to get. And upon division by ln 3 fourths, because this is going to be 1 plus 2k pi over ln 3 fourths, and then you're going to multiply by i. I just wanted to emphasize the fact that this can be written as a, a complex number in standard form. And again, if k is equal to 0 from here, x is going to be 1, which is going to give us the real solution that we got 
before. Therefore, these are going to be the complex solutions. This one and where's the other one? I lost it. Okay, this one and that one so that uh, and of course the specific values are going to give you the real solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.